Okay, take one. Let's go. Yeah. Alrighty. Mike, I'm excited. This oh, is yeah, this could be a time. blast. Man, wait till you start drinking on this thing. It is an audio format, so people won't know. <laughs> oh, I thought you were sharing videos. I'm like, yeah, we don't need to have the video just yet. We'll, we'll, do, we'll worry about video later. Oh, uh, no. For right now, this is strictly going to be audio unless we decide <laughs> to do video. So, yeah, no one will know. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Hell, it's like that people are freaked out that teachers drink. And my students, do they know? And I'm like, they're like, do you drink? And I was like, you think teachers don't drink? I said, y'all the reason we do. Shit. Well, that's also, I, I teach high schoolers. That's, that's why I can get away with it. I, I didn't have that conversation with my fourth graders when I taught elementary. <laughs> yeah, I forgot you did elementary for a Yeah, my first year was elementary. I did fourth grade. That's when they invited me back. And then I dropped them on the first or the first day of... Actually, it was the day before we were supposed to come back. They were like, all right, we're going to all show up at this time tomorrow morning. Breakfast will be ready. I called. I got that email. I'm like, all right, good. That afternoon, I get the call from my princ- the principal up at the high school. It's like, hey, do you still want to teach? And I was like, uh, yeah. And so I called up and I'm like, uh, hey, sh- I-, I just got a job opportunity. And I really wanted him to be like, man, you suck. Make it easy for me to leave. And of course, they were uh, the the principal and the vice principal. They're like, that was your passion. That's why you came into teaching was to teach high school history. Oh, my God. We're so happy for you. I'm like, could you guys just yell at me? Call me a son of a bitch or something. And that way it makes it easier to leave. you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I feel that's what I experienced when I transitioned to where I'm at now. So it's it was an interesting experience, but oh my goodness, I can't wait for tonight. I had those planned ideas I sent you earlier, but we'll just see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, have fun. You're gonna, you're the one who's got to go through all this rigmarole and edit it and find all the good shit and bleep out all my stupid ass comments. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's what's going to be so much yeah, fun. Hell no. Hell no. Like, this is raw. So, yeah, so I guess I could do some housekeeping. Granted. I know. People who's ever met me, you know, that, that whole TikTok where people turn around and do, I cuss. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite cuss word? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, that's, I use it as a semicolon. I use it as a freaking call, a, a colon or some other English phrase that I, you know, English ELA term I don't use we, or aware of. We don't teach language arts, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here in California. Hola, como esta? No. That's a conversation for another episode, because I'm just <laughs> like, can we not when it comes to our foreign language department? But anyways, housekeeping, you are allowed to curse. We, there will be an explicit tag, so just be you. <laughs> just a picture of the, this is on here. This guy. And if you don't think he drops an F-bomb every now and then, <laughs> you're sorely mistaken. So you yeah, just be dollars. you. This is just for fun. I mean... Oh, it's, yeah. it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> I'm gonna tur- I'm gonna do our best to at least get through a couple episodes of this before I do something to get us both fired. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to mention where we work, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we just say we work at a. It's like someone where I'm one high of us works. Here. I'm a middle <laughs> school teacher, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm in public school. You're in private school. That all that that, that works. We don't mention any schools' names. We never. I'm not gonna mention any of my kids for specifically. Oh, but I've got some great stories. You're going to just be bat shies on the path. Of oh, my goodness. That's going to be so much fun. Be like, oh, how does this relate? Let me tell you. <laughs> I've got a preview of one. Go for it. I'm not going to go into the full thing. But this student came up to me and handed me a piece of paper with 31 different identities. So they were names, genders, identities, and species. And this student decided to tell me that at any time she could identify as any one of these because she had multiple personality disorder. And it wasn't just boy, girl, he, him. No, it went dragon, queen, fairy queen, elf king, uh, dragon princess. Then you had cat, dog, vampire, werewolf, Stuff like that. There were 31 different flavors of... <laughs> Woo! Yeah. The Baskin Robbins of flavors. <laughs> mm-hmm. I literally took this... I had this list, and... I took it to the admin. I was like... They didn't cover this. Uh, I know I'm alt-cert. I didn't go to college to become a teacher. So I had to do all the online stuff. This wasn't covered. What the hell do I do? 
And they were like, what? There's, who's their counselor? I was like, I took it down to the counselor. They, sh- they were like, we already called. As soon as you left my office walking to hers, I called her like she knew. And so she called the counselor, called the mom. And the mom's like, I, this is the first I'm hearing of this. Like, oh, great. Yeah. Sweet. The, the same student claimed that she had la- laryngitis. Didn't. Why are you doing this to me? And she's an implant. Middle of the year, she came in from another teacher. She, uh, the, they were in the uh, worst AP. They were in AP class, and they apparently was too much workload for the AP. And she said, "I want to go to be in his class." And I'm like, "Yeah, you poor man." Oh, sh- everybody wants to come in. Is oh, your class is tough. I was like, "No, my class is tough because you don't do the work." I said, all you have to do is do it. And I don't even care if you do it on time. I take 1% off for every day late. You can turn stuff in late. You can redo any test. Just do it. And they will fight me tooth and nail. I give them days in class. I'm like, you know what? This is all we're doing today. You're, you have t- all class period to do this. Nope. And I, I'll call. I'll remind them. Hey, come up. Hey, get off your phone. And they're like, Okay. They're back on their phone. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to bang my head against the wall. I'm going to pay attention to the students that need my help and want it. I'm sure it's probably just as bad for you on these. You know what? Let's just get to the introductions and then we'll just jump straight into it because this is I'm treating this as my therapy session. (laughs) Here we go. Because, listen, other people will not get struggles that we are going through unless they are in the same profession. Oh, my God. No, there are no way people are going to sit there and be able to to understand. It's like when the military stuff, people don't understand until you are in the military. Oh, my goodness. OK, so here's what we'll do. We'll just yeah. do introductions. If you want to plug any social media, you can. Once again, we'll keep where we actually work generic. <laughs> yeah, that works. Keeps us employed. So, we like this being paid thing. We like this being paid thing. Plus, this is an outlet for us. So parents and students, just let us live our lives. <laughs> yeah. Here's an idea. Here's the thing. Parents, students, if you don't find our humor funny or we say something offensive, we're going to teach you something that our generation learned. Change the channel. This is going to be on media. So all you have to do is stop play. Close the app that we're on. Go listen to Bob and Tom, Lex and Terry, The View, or anything else you want to listen to. Nobody forces you uh, to listen to these two yahoos on here talking. And if they are, I apologize for any torture that they are committing to you. Oh, I'm already going to enjoy this. All right, so let's do this. So I'm going to give... We'll see how long this goes. I'll <laughs> chop it up, edit it up later. I'm just there you go. I think we, we can rant for a hot minute, so... I know. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is going to be great. Okay. So I'll give the countdown and then I'll do the introduction. This is only two of us. It won't take five minutes to get through everyone. <laughs> yeah. That's for a different, that's for a different time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I still love the name that I came up with this. So the Unprofessional Development Podcast. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. It really is. Yeah. So the Unprofessional Development Podcast, episode one, countdown begins in three, two, one. And we are live. Hello to all my guys, gals and non-binary pals of audio podcast land. And welcome to the first episode of the Unprofessional Development Podcast. (laughs) I think I'm going to giggle every time you say that, by the way. Listen, that is totally fine. Where you will just hear two teachers just rant, rave and offer some perspective in our line of work so strapping kids because it's going to be a wild ride (laughs) they finally let us out (laughs) yeah it's ridiculous but i am one of your co-hosts for this amazing podcast mikey you can follow me on my personal social medias at pop culture geek you can also follow us collectively at the dnd vibe tribe where you can stay up to date on when all these amazing episodes will be released you're going to want to tune in so don't go nowhere. But of course, as always, I cannot do this podcast alone. I have my amazing co-host who decided to give this a try with me. So we're going to see what happens. But I'm going to let him introduce himself. 
Mike, so Mikey and Mike, uh, no relation. I have hair, um, so you can see. He doesn't. Well, actually, you can't see because this is all audio, so my bad on that one. You can actually follow me on my personal stuff at uh, do TikTok, at Draw Backwards. Pretty much at Draw Backwards is going to be where you can find me. And if you do find me, act like you don't know me, please. Other than that, yeah, we're just two teachers that are... Trying to maintain, not even gain our sanity. We're just trying to maintain whatever's left. There's a tiny little sliver of it. <laughs> it has been wild two years. It really has. Yeah. I, don't, I look back at it wondering, how did I get here? And how did I stay sane? I got asked that there, because I'm a retired military. I did 20 years. I was an Air Force cop. And they asked me, why did I become a teacher? And I was like, I'm a glutton for punishment, apparently. I like being yelled at. The chance of being physically assaulted is always great. I hear some of the strangest stories uh, in, from both professions because these kids don't realize. And I, I remind them before they want to tell me a fun story because I'm that cool teacher. And if you, since you can't see, it was the air quotes there. I want to start trying to talk to me and tell me all these fun things that they do outside of school. And I'm like, just be aware. Two words you're going to have to remember is mandatory reporter. What's that? I'm like, pretty much I'm a, I'm a professional snitch. You tell me something, I have to do something or they can fire me and I go to jail. So do you still want to tell me the story? Half of them don't. Yeah. And I like that too in some cases, especially depending on the day. It's just, I can't deal with any more drama. What are you about to tell me right now? Oh, you don't want to tell me? Never mind. Okay. Thank you. <sighs> It does get much as you want to give attention to each one of them as they come up and sometimes they just want to have that connection with somebody that that they care or they, they think at least cares about them because we do we if you're in this profession for anything other than the kids i know you're wrong but they just want to have a connection with you or at least feel it and no matter how bad of a day you're having, you have to look at them and go, put that smile on your face, because that might be the only smile they get to that day. Aw, and I thought I was going to be the bleeding heart of this. <laughs> well, I'm a tough guy, but I'm also very aware of that these kids, they come from trauma backgrounds, and they come from all these places, and each one is different. And, and I wake, I get up at my first period, I've got a kid first thing he asked me how i'm doing how my day has been and i'm like dude it just started i don't know how was your night i said i'm i woke up that's a good thing but it's the it's the constant every morning and i'm just like dude i don't have enough coffee in me right now i can't the whiteboard's not even on man leave me alone <laughs> it's just listen just give me a couple minutes and i promise we'll have this conversation <laughs> Yeah, we asked, just let me get everybody settled in. You got everybody coming in, and of course, the first thing, everybody comes in. What are we doing today? Look at the board. And I show, I, I literally have my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I, I teach one mm -hmm. prep. I, it's not like I have something different for each class period. I've got six classes, all are U.S. history. I'm like, look on the board. Oh, you put something on the board? See, I'm glad that's a <laughs> universal thing, apparently, between both of our grade levels that we teach. So if to the listeners who are listening, just to give a little perspective here, one of us teaches high school, the other does middle school, but there's a lot of overlap between the two. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I still get it. Hey, uh, Mr. Where do we turn in our assignments? By the way, we just finished our third nine weeks. I'm like, the door is over there. Get out. Yeah. You know how hard it is for teachers not to be pretty much smart asses to the kids? I, I find it so hard. You might be a little easier. When they ask, where do I turn in my assignments? I just, I, I, I just I breathe and I realize it's not worth a felony and I just point. Y'all killing me, Smalls. This. Now, see, it's, no, it's just as bad, if not worse, just in my case, only because there's that. But then also just in general, they're just because I'm the sixth grade homeroom teacher. So those are my babies. Mm. So I'm transitioning them from elementary to middle school. My work is cut out for it. But hey, you know what? I'm enjoying myself this year. However, comma, again, try not to catch a felony out here. 
they know better not to be disrespectful and smart asses to me. But I get after that. I'm like, you guys, it's barely eight o'clock in the morning. School has just barely started. Why are we being smart asses to each other like this early at the gate? Save it for recess. Save it for lunch. Don't do it in my classroom when we just started. They are vicious to each other in the morning. It is ridiculous. So for me, school starts at 8 a.m., but the kids get there at 730 because that's when the gates open. Literally, the first two or three students, everything's fine. Like, it's copacetic. And then by 745, kids walk in. This is not even without even no reprimands of good morning or how you doing. They literally just come in. They look at their friend and they're like, what's up, punk? I'm like, oh, boy, it's going to be that day today, isn't it? It usually starts with that, with that one kid when they walk in. I had my second period. Now, this was at the beginning of the year. I had the one student... She- she came in it was always good morning it was polite it was general inquisitiveness on the lesson or had a question it wasn't just like hey, what are we doing today it was a breath of fresh it was like huh ah, after first period's over this student comes oh this is nice i get this but then i had that one i still him he's still in my class the girl isn't she moved to another period but the boy comes what up mr Wu? i'm like what you doing dog and i'm like man not the day. I'm not that guy. Oh, and come then on, of course, don't be like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, this is like when you don't, there was, it's usually, oh, come on, man. Don't be like that. I was like, listen, I am not your homie. I am not your friend. I am your teacher first. We can be cool, but we cannot cross that line here. We are friendly. We are not friends. Exactly. I had a kid my first year teaching high school. I was handing out uh, report cards and I was calling them out by name. This individual got up way beforehand, and I'm not even to the individual's name yet, but I'm calling them up one by one because I don't want to get mauled. Anytime you have to hand anything out, you'll get kids like, oh, I want, and you're like, no, I will call you up one by one. I will hand it to you, then you go back to your seat, and I'll call up the next person. I had a small classroom. It was the easiest thing. And so he jumped up knowing his name was coming, and I was like, go have a seat. He's oh, I'm, I'm just waiting on mine. I was like, you can wait like everybody else. Nobody else is waiting up here. Go have a seat. Come on, son. I was like, excuse me? He's like, come on, son. Don't be like that. Mind you, I am 6'3", 240 pounds. Beard face, long hair. I've got boots older than this kid. And he wants to come up and go, come on, son. It took everything not to go back into the military mindset right there. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, he's going to get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just sitting, I'm like, you need to go have a seat. I will not be disrespectful of my classroom. If you want to be disrespectful, you can get out of my classroom and go over to student services. He got out and he walked out. I was like, I just called him up and I said, I was like, hey, I've got a runner. They're like, because kid left my classroom, disrespectful. And I was like, he's hot headed. I don't want to write him up for this. I mean, I hate writing up because mainly the fact is I have to write them up. It has to take time out of my day to write somebody up and most of the stuff I can handle on my own. But he needs to go handle. He needs to go talk to somebody, not me. It's see, you're better than I am. So (laughs) now I want to make this a disclaimer in no way, shape or form. I love my job. I love my students. But (laughs) what you are about to hear, I just keep it real. And that's just how it's going to be. Let's just put leave. Let's just go from there. <laughs> yeah. So my problem with it, because once again, I'm at, I have middle school, so I have sixth, seventh and eighth grade. So for me, my thing with them is they. How do I put this nicely? <laughs> they like to cross the line. Oh, yeah, they're, 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 you've got the ones that want to test the waters. They're still trying to figure out. They've got the hormones. They've got their whole, their whole world changing. And you've got to deal with that one? Mm-mm, no. So here's how it goes down. So usually when my students talk to me, and this goes for all of my students because I do 6th, 7th, and 8th grade math, so that's always fun. Oh, but oh, we'll, get into that. we'll get that in a little bit. But... So when they're talking to me, usually I try to keep it casual. I talk to them, not at them. But then there will be times where I get after them. And they're like, oh, come on. You can't be like that. Or my favorite response is always is that or the or the sound effects. I just look at them. I'm like, 
And usually it's mostly my girls. <laughs> my boys, I'm like, the boys I just stare at and they're like, sorry. And then I'm like, mm hmm. But the girls, I'm like, little girl, little boy. When they respond back, I'm like, I don't know who you think I am, but I will tell you. I was like, you may talk to them like that, but you will not be talking to me like that. I'll talk. I'm not going to sit there and square up, but I also tell them my hands are rated E for everyone. Oh, my so. gosh. I love that one. And I was like, I said, you want to square up? I watch uh, Yellowstone. I don't know if anybody else does, but they have a bunkhouse rule which was there is no fighting in the bunkhouse, and if you want to fight, you have to fight Rip. Now, he's the he's the, the top ranch hand, and he's a big dude. And, of course, in my classroom, I'm like, if you want to fight somebody, because you know, you'll get attitudes back and forth, and that's how I stop. I screw up their OODA loop. I usually have to elevate my voice. They, they haven't gotten full military voice yet. But that's how I break up fights. I've never had to sit there and put hands, or at least even step into a fight. Usually I can get in the middle and I'll sit there and I'll drop my voice down and they'll get the they'll get a good scream, but it usually screws up their OODA loop where they turn around and now I'm a new stressor because right now it's just those two. When I'm there, like I said, six three two forty, depending on which convenience store I'm leaving. When I show up and I'm sitting there seeing the voice, now I'm a new stressor, so they're going to hit the fight or flight response, and which is going to be turning around. They are going to run, which I'm okay with them running. Feel free. Get out of here. You're not fighting. You're going to freeze means you're going to stop fighting, which is okay. I'm okay with. And the last one, they're going to fight, and I'm the stressor. They're going to look at me and go, not a good idea. Not one of them I've seen a kid yet that said there's going to be able to throw anything that's going to hurt. Not that I'm like Superman, but if one, I'm not stupid enough to, to let them land it. <laughs> But I got, a, I got kids fighting in the halls last year, and I show up and they stop. But I feel so sorry for the, the little... F we just had a, a petite female. She ended up getting... I think it was just grazed, but her she got hair pulled. It was two, two boys fighting, and she got in the middle of it. I'm like, what are you getting in the middle of that fight for? I have so many stories of just... So I don't want to say that fighting amongst high schoolers is OK, but like I get it because older kids, it is what it is like. I understand it. What I don't under and even maybe to a certain extent, I understand if eighth graders get into it because they're on that precipice being high schools. I get it. Yeah. But let me tell you, the wildest things I have seen is watching some not where I'm at now, but before watching some sixth graders, given that they're like 10 and 11 when they're coming into sixth grade most of the time. And they're fighting in the bathroom. They're fighting in the field. They're like dragging each other down the hallway. I'm just looking at them. I'm like, you are 10 years old. What is going on that you feel the need to drag someone down the hallway? They're trying like, to what curb is stop each other. Yeah, they're getting violent. Now, here's one for you. Would you rather get in the middle between two boys fighting or two girls fighting? Now, these are students. Okay. So I've had experience with both, unfortunately and unfortunately. Thankfully, I didn't get severely injured, so we're good. Honestly, I'd rather get in between two boys because it's easier to break up. Because boys, once you get in the middle, then they just start, most of the time, they just start talking to each other as being pulled apart. But it's fine. When you separate the girls, they will jump you. They will punch you. They will try to jump over your shoulder. They'll calm down for 10 seconds. And then when you least expect it, they'll like quickly get back up and try to go back to fight. And I'm like, uh-uh, oh. we ain't having this. This, they, and they're fight. The guys will at least try to stand up and square up a little bit. They'll, they'll at least stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, try to knuckle up just a hair bit. I swear, it looks like an unregistered UFC fight when two females go at it. They're scratching and pulling, and if they can swing it, they're grabbing it and they're throwing it. God forbid there's like a freshman next to them and they just get picked up and yeeted. It's the wildest thing I see when two girls fight is like the, one girl gets another to the ground and starts like full on punching her. And then I'm like, OK, this is getting out of hand. And then what happens next is she grabs her by her hair and literally drags her down the like in the field. Now, here's the thing. And again, this is another disclaimer. So if you're uber sensitive, you should probably tune out, change the channel, log off. Like, it's fine. We love you. Thanks for sticking around. For me, yes, students shouldn't be fighting, but sometimes when I see these fights go down, a little sick, twisted side of me is like laughing at them. Oh my gosh, this is wild. I can't help but laugh. 
Students <laughs> gone can't. wild. And, and you, you, you just hear in the you, you just hear it down the hallway. World Star. Oh my gosh. Where it's not even World Star anymore. Kids will just post anything and do they just post anything anywhere and I tried, to, I tried to tell them that the other day. I was like, you got you think you're, that your generation is doing all this cool edgy stuff. I was like, no. My generation, we were doing that stuff too. Y'all are just getting caught. So we didn't post this stuff. We tried to stop people from knowing all the dumb stuff we used to do. Y'all want to share it and get notoriety for it. I would tell a story. There was actually a guy in the, he's in Leavenworth. He might still be in there. But he was he got uh, he got a uh, hard time. Big rocks into little rocks for pulling a firearm on duty. It posted on Snapchat. Telling you, I tell the kids, I was like, careful what you post because the internet is forever. But of course, most kids had the attention span of a goldfish, or in my case, they had the attention span of a freaking pinto bee. <laughs> yeah. Ferret on crack is what I call them half the time. Yeah. They're just all over the place. You know, and we try to do what we can in the classrooms. Like I had one there, like, and I was like, Mr. Ward, I can't sit down. In which I did it again. I know, you caught yourself, and I've, did, I've done it twice already. You can't help but try to not use your name when, you're, when they talk to you. I, saw, I, I caught you doing it once already. But I can't sit down today. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, too much coffee? They're like, no. I don't know why. And I'm like, okay. And they act like we don't know that they do stuff before school, during school, in their cars. In the bath. When Which did I the don't ba- understand. When did the bathroom become the place where everything goes down? That made no se- That makes no sense. I'm like, y'all are on school campus. Now, I'm not giving advice, but like when we did stupid stuff in school, like we didn't do it on school grounds. We either went home. We went to the park. We, d- we we didn't do anything on campus. I'm like, are you crazy? On campus was the last resort or it was the rarity. You did stuff off campus because you didn't get suspended or expelled for doing it off campus. It, the school couldn't do anything about it. If it happened, because I lived on military installations my most pretty much all my life. And so we have bus stops and you would get off at a bus stop that wasn't yours. So even if the bus stop or somebody saw it, you weren't at your stop and nobody else was around. Oh, shit. It's ridiculous. Sorry. eBay stuff. These kids, they, they want to do it all where everybody can see them. Now, I had one kid uh, a couple weeks ago. Actually, not too long ago. It was right before spring break. Somebody put hands on his sister. Dude found out, walked up to that classroom, walked in, clock, and that was it. The dude, he's like, I knew I was going to get in trouble for it. He walked in, he walked down to the admin, just sat there, and he's like, yeah, they'll be calling for me in a minute. At least the kid, at least the student was just like, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble. He's just like, I did what I did, and that's it. Like, in a weird yeah. way, again, professional-wise, that's a big no-no, but just me personally, I'm like, I can respect that. Yeah, <laughs> there's one kid, they, they were um, actually the same kid who said he's got a, a very big uh, protection complex. He wants to protect others. And they were picking on... This kid wasn't even on there. But it was a a group of kids playing on the basketball court, and they were taunting and teasing about this other kid. It wasn't even there. That one, The one student that I talked about earlier came up and just laid the dude out. He asked him to stop, and he just... The guy just kept pushing on and pushing on it. All disparaging terms for the, the other kid that wasn't there that had the learning... That had a learning disability. And he was like, you know what, dude, you just uh, don't do it. He cracked him, and then he, he waited for the, the coach because they were on the basketball court. He said, yep. He went up. He was like, there's no use. I'm not going to lie. This is what he did. And like I said, I don't agree with ever putting hands on somebody. There's nothing in school that needs, needs you need to get physical and violent with. But part of you does understand. You go, yeah, I can see some of that. Yeah, and it's one of those things where we try to teach our students is like violence should never be the first option. It should be your last resort. <laughs> it's one of those weird situations, too, because I tell kids, this is, if you're able to run, but if you find that there's no other option and you have to fight back, then by all means, fight back if you have to, which I don't know how it it's different across the board, but I hate it when kids who fight back get in trouble because, it's, listen, it was either let them like 
jump me, gang up on me, and beat me d- up, or just fight back so I don't get hurt as much. And in mo- certain cases, I just look at the kids that are getting in trouble. Do they really need to be in trouble? They were just defending themselves here. What are they supposed to do? Just sit there and just get molly get- on like everywhere is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to let that one pass. Who uses Molly Wapped, by the way? So I'm going to call you out on that one. But yeah, I agree. There's a difference, and that's what I tried to explain to him. That there's a difference between self-defense and mutual affray. So I had a kid who was outside my classroom last year, and I, I was able to actually witness the, not the initiation of it, because they had a passing by. Somebody, one of them said something to the other one. It got offended. They walked. I mean, it was in passing, so it wasn't like a stop. It was in passing. And so the other one turns around and then charges back at this. Now, the guy who, like a buck ten soaking wet. And there's no reason he should have ever been running at this kid who was an uh, amateur boxer. He lifts. There's, you should have seen the difference between the two was ridiculous. And he came at him. And so he charged him. And so what did the bigger kid did? He pretty much dodged the swing, picked up the other kid, and pretty much assisted gravity with carrying him to the ground. And there were witnesses to it. And I knew, I knew both of the kids. I had him, actually. And I looked at him. I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's, he came at me. I, I had to do it for him. I goes, I, I didn't swing at him. I swear, I swear. And there was plenty of witnesses. And I even went and talked to admin on his behalf. They, they actually gave him three days of school off. They didn't give him with a suspension, but they said, we're going to give you three days so you get to calm down. Which he's, I'm not ready. He's, I need the time to just, that way I don't have to do with people asking me about it. I don't have to do it. And he was fine with it. And there was nothing punitive that came through because it was defense. And I explained that to the other students. I said, he defended himself, even though he put hands onto another kid. It was in defense versus squaring up and swinging. I said, if he does, if you swing at him, it stops being self-defense and turns into mutually mutual affray. And that's something I don't think they realize that it actually is a thing and how it's viewed. We yes. got a society now. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to agree with you. It's so weird to see how much everything has changed within the education system and how we respond to certain things. Again, I'm not a proponent for violence, but sometimes, and I say this just off the cuff when I'm talking to other teachers, I'm like, sometimes if they need to fight, let them fight, get it, get the, get it out and over with. If two kids are beefy, just, I just say it off the cuff. I'm like, just let them fight. If they're two boys, I'm like, just let it fight. Cause usually when we guys, when we fight, like we fight, and usually for the most part is done and over with. We move on with our lives, whatever. I hate it when girls fight because once the initial fight is over, then they drag it out with the gossip and all the extra stuff that comes with it. I'm like, which leads me into the one thing I hate when it comes to these conflicts is all the social media. Be like, oh, they said this about me on Instagram or she tweeted my man. I'm like. Who cares? <laughs> I'm like, don't bring it into my classroom. I don't care. Uh, I don't care who Insta, who tweeted, twittered, like Facebooked. <laughs> like, I don't care. The low key I do because sometimes they're like, hey, can I tell you the tea? I'm like, what's going on? You didn't hear it from me, but I'm like, oh, really? See, and usually I don't. I try not to listen to gossip because these are kids being kids, but. There's always one or two students who know all the business. And so I try to be best friends with them because then they tell me, yo, something's about to go down. You didn't hear it from me, but they're about to do this after school. I'm like, oh, OK. Uh, call them. Mm. We have a situation that might be popping off in 10, 15 minutes. So I just need every I need security down there real quick. It's yeah. I'm like, I hate it when they drink their personal like Internet drama or even their personal drama and bring it to school. Spe- Especially in my siblings. <laughs> That's, you know, you got the middle school, which is even worse because they're like, oh, she was talking to my man. That boy won't even know your name in six years. When you guys are finally out of school, that boy's not even going to know your name. You're not going to remember a single thing when life becomes real for you. This man you're talking to ain't a thing. 
this girl that he's talking to. And I, I tell a lot of the girls, they're like, oh, my guy, he's, he's leaving me on red and all this stuff. And I'm just going, why do you want to be with somebody who wants, who's leaving you on red? If that is that big of an issue for you, why are you with them? Why do you care? If they're not going to sit there and give you time and effort, like if they don't want to hang out with you and they don't want to sit there and spend time with you, why are you with them? And you see a couple of them, they haven't even thought that far. They have that teenage brain that's got those blinders on. It's just the horses that they put them up there. Their teenage brain, if it's not within five feet of their face, they don't know about it. It's, it is, it's crazy. And then I haven't, I have to catch myself sometimes. I'm like, duh. I was like, welcome to the world. You just drew this conclusion. I'm like, I have to remember these are children. At the end of the day, so <laughs> they haven't experienced what the rest of us have experienced quite yet and learn again, we hope they learn their lesson, but then I'm looking around at some of my coworkers, I'm like, apparently we didn't learn our lesson when we were younger. Yeah. Oof, don't even get it started on teacher drama. Oh, but that's the fun one though. Listen, oh, student Yeah. Student drama's fine, but there's something about teacher drama. And it's fine to share in small groups, especially, but airing it out, I don't know, it just seems wrong to me. Like, I'll air out some student stuff all day long, no issue. But I think there's something about airing out teacher drama that is, in general terms, I mean, if you're airing out specifics, uh, I don't know, I think we've got it hard enough that in the teacher realm, teachers talking to teachers, gossiping to teachers is one thing, but being on something where possibly if somebody were able to put two and two together and then it can get back to that teacher is a different story. Thank you. the teacher, I... but like admin. It's because like, like, this teacher came in and they were high as shit. It's like the context isn't there. I think there's so much more with it going on. And I don't know. I'm just a little more hesitant. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to talk about it. I'm just a little more hesitant about it. No, for sure. Like, what we share between us is we never want to, but man, do it. thankfully I have never been in drama, but I have been witness to drama. It is. I'll just share a quick one. and I'm not going to go into too much details. I don't work at this school anymore. So we're and everyone is is, is game on. So I was just like, I'm not there no more. So I don't got to answer to them. That's fair game. So that it was. Oof, where do I start with this one? OK. So, me and another teacher at the school, my personality type is, is is that as long as you treat me with respect, like, we cool. We don't need to be best friends after this, but we can work well together. And this just happened to be another math teacher. Very older gentleman, but like yourself, military background, decided to become a teacher. Wow, I have a type. I'm just realizing that. Who knew <laughs> in terms of my friends? But anyways... So I got along with him really well, and we were just chilling during lunchtime. All of a sudden, we see one of the language arts teachers, like, coming out of her room just in tears. And I just look at him. I'm like, do we be our, do we be good people and see what's wrong or do we just ignore it? He's just, just ignore it. But if she comes this way, then we have no choice. I'm like, OK, so we'll just pretend we didn't see anything. She comes over. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> in my head, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Oh, you, don't well. wanna, you don't want to get into the draw, but you're like, I've got enough stuff going on. I don't need more drama added to my life or at least any more issues. I've got my own. I've got enough issues. It's called subscriptions. <laughs> but yeah, there's times that you want to be a personal, you want to be friendly, and you want to talk to your fellow teachers. But there's times that you're like, I know I might be the only adult you talk to today. <laughs> really? You don't need to unload on me. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm just trying to eat the sandwich, but okay. So oh. she walks over. Why, why is it always at lunch? Why is it always at lunch? Why is it always? You're just trying to get some. You've been starving. You've got <laughs> leftovers from the night before. You're like, I just need to get some food. I'll get some energy. Can I talk to you real quick? Ah! You're <laughs> screaming that in your head. You're like, of course. Sure. Oh, my goodness. It's anyways. So she walks over and. I'm like, I just wanted a sandwich, but whatever. So we both look at her and we're like, what's wrong? <laughs> I was just like, it's it was a lot to say the least. So long story short, through all the bemoaning and the crying, we get the details that apparently 
and everyone knew this at this point. Like she and one of the other teachers were dating. So I was just like, that's a red flag number one, but I don't judge. It is what it is. Yeah, you do you. You're an adult. And so I was like, okay, everyone's an adult here. So everyone makes their own choices. That was, that's what I thought was the extent of it. I'm like, oh, okay, just relationship drama, whatever. Then she continues and then she drops the bomb. And then she's once again, and me <laughs> and this teacher were floored with what she said next, because then she's, I caught him cheating with one of the other teachers down the hall. I'm like, oh, oh. I'm like, no, this is not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> But tell me more. Yeah. Again, <laughs> morbid like, curiosity. In morbid curiosity, I'm like, wait, how do you know? And then she began to explain. Thankfully, she didn't show us the evidence that she had, but there were pictures and text oh. messages. <laughs> and so she's, I don't know what to do. She kept crying. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, let me formulate the best response I possibly can to be as nice to her as possible but let her know that she needs to dump him. Before I could say anything, this math teacher just blatantly spits out. He's just dump him. I says, you're crying over a loser. Just dump him and just move on with your life. You deserve better. And he just went back to eating his food. I just look at him. I'm like, <laughs> just cold heart, just dead. Dude. I'm trying to get my sandwich down. Just go away from me. <laughs> I'm so she goes back to her away. room, still crying. I just look at this. I just look at him. I'm like that was a move and he's just listen i have been here for 12 years i have seen it all i was like i don't got time for this i'm just trying to eat this lunch we only have 20 minutes left before we have the next period Facts. <laughs> but man i was like i was not ready for it and i'll be honest i have worked with a lot of teachers most of them pretty good a couple of them mediocre i've had like maybe two or three where i was just like all right rules of fight club of teacher fight club number one we don't talk about it meet me in the parking lot <laughs> there are times where i want to throw hands with other adults which goes back to just, i can't do that because i gotta be an example but in my head i'm like i'm gonna throw these hands right now mm -hmm. violence isn't the answer but sometimes you get that question wrong on purpose it's crazy yeah talk about throwing hands with teachers i'm gonna put that one up right now end of the day on a pd day does anybody have any last questions? And there's that one that puts their hand up in the back. I got something real quick. Forget PD, just regular staff meetings. I'm like, why? I am tired. I want to go home. I could be grading papers. Like, why? I could do anything but be sitting here. We're trying to do this. It's like half. You got professional development in the morning with your staff meeting, professional development in the morning. And then second half of the like professional development day, it's like, go to your classroom and prep and start. But you get a good half day where you can actually get like a bunch of stuff done. And or they're just dragging it out like, all right, we're going to send everybody to lunch. Does anybody have anything before lunch? I swear I turn around and I give everybody that look like, don't you ask a damn question. Ask offline. Wait till they release, then go hunt them down and ask that question. Let me just get out of here first. Let's just talk about PDs in general. So it's just OK. So I don't want to be that person. You trust me. I love my career. I love the decision be that person. I made. Be that person. But why am I wasting my time? Granted, listen, anytime I don't have to teach my students for a day, I will take it. Like sometimes I just need a break. I just need a refresher. But then you lock me in the school with the, all these teachers for a day. And I'm just like, why am I here? And then sometimes the PD that we be doing, I'm just like, do I really need to sit through this? I'm like, I don't know about y'all, but I don't need to be here, especially when they go over the stuff you're already doing in class. I'm like, why am I here? My favorite, though, is when they're like, I know this won't apply to like half of you. Why are you teaching it to the whole group? <laughs> I was like, just take that group of people, go do it somewhere else, and then the rest of us will figure it out. Yeah. Oh, this is the one I hate. So I've heard teachers like and other like people who work in education. They're like they tell me they're like, do you sit next to your bestie? I'm like, hell yeah, because they're the only ones that are going to get me through this boring eight hour presentation that we have to do. And then they're just like, we're not being I had one teacher tell me we're not being good teachers, because if we ask our students to work with people they don't know and like you, we should do it, too. I'm like, girl, we are stuck in here for eight whole hours. And I don't want to be here to begin with. So if I'm going to sit with my best friend over here and we're just going to giggle and talk shit 
and do all kinds of stuff during this presentation. I am going to. I don't know what did you do to get your rocks off, but I'm going to enjoy myself in this boring ass eight hour professional development. I'm going to sit next to him because if not, I'm going to spend the whole time sending like the dankest memes back and forth, seeing if we can get each other to bust out laughing and get each other. See, this is why we would work well, but we would also <laughs> cause chaos. Oh, like yeah. if we were at the same site. They're like, oh, no, here comes Team m and awesome. They're like, they're great teachers, but they cause the most chaos. <laughs> exactly. I'd be sitting there and, and that will be hard on all of us. That's what she said. <laughs> it's, it's that stuff that you're just trying. You're just trying to be that class clown because it's the only thing you're doing is to keep your sanity into this mind numbingness. How many buzzwords can they throw out at these PDs? And it's research based. Really? What's the research? We don't have that yet. Huh? Then why are you here? <laughs> We're going to get the data from y'all. I swear, what? if I hear that sentence one more time, I'm going to throw things at the next presenter who oh sends him. Yes. I'm going to do a full on Lord of the Flies here. I was just like, Piggy must die. <laughs> exactly. We get the, we, uh, that's what I love about these PDs that we get out there. That they, they, they put out this information and, oh, we'll judge you on... No, we're going to judge the progress on the years that we've used this. We can't do that. Because like where I teach, we are in 2018, we had a Hurricane Michael. And of course, then 2019, we get into a pandemic. And then we come back and then we're still pandemic school. I've got high schoolers right now that haven't been in a regular year, but we're supposed to gauge them and they're supposed to, we're supposed to give all these metrics and data so they can build these professional development courses and all these research things. And to kids that are barely you know, surviving, we're in a pandemic right now, and these kids are just trying to figure out what to do on a day-to-day. -day. And then you're going to come and throw these PDs at us trying to act like it's normal. You want to throw a PD. How many PDs have you gone through about mental health for students? What about mental health for teachers? You can tell me all day, take care of my mental health, take care of my mental health. Go ahead, try taking a mental health day, see how that flies over. I can't. It, and I, I do commend the administration that actually is behind that, because like we want administration to be behind. Listen, we need to take care of our teachers, both physically, mentally, emotionally. Like there are. I've gotten to work with some administration that really care for their teachers and they want to keep them. So they're like, they go the extra mile for us. I've also had some that were in the complete opposite direction. So I've experienced both in my short time alive, but man, I, it makes me so mad. It's just like, why do you need to take a sick day? I just need a day to myself where I'm not doing anything and just, I just need a mental break. Yeah. I, my admin, my subject matter admin, Awesome. She, if I were to say, I need a mental health day, she's taken. I tell her all the time that she needs to take it because she will drive herself into the, the grave caring about these kids. And so I tell her, I was like, you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself too. And so we put, it's, the military had a great saying with it. It was the resiliency. And I was like, be that tennis ball. Sometimes that ball won't bounce back if you do not take care of it. And that's where we were lucky. We had a storm day. When I say storm it was some pretty. It was supposed to be some pretty serious rain for us, and so they can't. They canceled school today, so we got a free day off in the middle of the week. But it was a great day. And my wife asked me. She's like, "How was it nice just being able to not do anything?" And I was like, "It was. It. It was needed." I know we just came off spring break, but I, I swear the kids are extra coming off of any type of break. It is ridiculous. Like the days leading into break and then coming back from break is just. Book ended with just pure chaos. Get me out of here. <laughs> you want to, yeah, it's like you, the, as soon as you get him back, you're like, all right, I've got my schedule. I've got my syllabus. We got to stay on course. We got to stay on track. We've got to do all this stuff. It's that first day back. You're like, I know you guys are going to be about as worthless as tits on a bull. So, you know what? We are going to do something, but it's going to look like something, but it's not really going to be something. I, like, I took a lesson that should have taken me a day, and I extended it out. I, I gave a lot of individual time, and they don't see it. And I play it off really well for them. But I, I try to factor into them. I just wish the same could be used for teachers. 
So when they start talking about these professional developments and all these nice little things, that it looks great on paper, but do they really take into factor the teachers needing more? Because they're asking more and more to do more and more of teachers. But what is happening every day? Teachers are, are fleeing. And I, I don't even say leaving the career field. They're fleeing in record numbers. My daughter just, she'll graduate college this spring. Oh, the, congrats. This spring, yeah, elementary, edu- elementary education. She went to a, her teacher for their cohort, got up together. So it was like, you have something, you have a rare opportunity that most teachers don't have, didn't have prior to you. He was, you're going to have a job market that is going to be fighting for y'all. Usually it was trying to find a school that you could get into just to get your foot in the door. Now you're going to have your choice of schools because people, because teachers are fleeing. 